Did you know that there are actually three expressions to the gift of speaking in tongues? Here is how I've termed those three expressions. Number one, the personal tongue. Number two, the proof tongue. Number three, the prophetic tongue. Now, though you won't see those exact terms in the Bible, when you study the scripture, you'll clearly see that there are, in fact, three expressions to the gift of speaking in tongues. Number one, the personal tongue. The scripture says, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God. Since people won't be able to understand you, you will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. But the one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1-4. through 4. The personal tongue does not benefit others, but that doesn't mean it holds no value. The Bible says a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally. The personal tongue is for self-edification and it's a heavenly language. Those who use it aren't speaking an earthly dialect. They are speaking mysteries. Only God can understand them. The personal expression of the gift of tongues strengthens you personally. Number two, the proof tongue. The second expression of the gift of tongues is the proof tongue. Now, this is the expression of tongues that is heard as an earthly language. We see an example of this demonstrated in Acts chapter 2. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. That's Acts chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. Many heard their own languages being spoken by the believers. It was a true miracle. The Holy Spirit supernaturally empowered the believers to be heard speaking in earthly languages that they didn't know. The gift was a sign to the unbelievers. Thus, I call it the proof tongue. Number three, the prophetic tongue. The prophetic tongue is the expression of the gift that's used in the context of a church assembly. The gift, when used, commands the attention of the assembly of believers. Because this expression of the gift can disrupt the flow of a church service if misused, Paul put some regulations on it. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize. When you meet together, one will sing, one will teach, another will tell some special revelation God has given, one will speak in tongues, and another will interpret what is said. But everything that is done must strengthen all of you. No more than two or three should speak in tongues. They must speak one at a time, and someone must interpret what they say. But if no one is present who can interpret, they must be silent in your church meeting and speak in tongues to God privately. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 and 28. Paul the Apostle put restrictions specifically on the prophetic expression of the gift of tongues. The prophetic tongue is meant to be spoken aloud in a gathering of believers. The tongue is then supernaturally interpreted so that the believers present can be helped by the prophetic message. Now, allow me to embolden the distinctions between the three different expressions of the gift of tongues. The personal tongue benefits the individual, that's 1 Corinthians 14, 4. The prophetic tongue benefits the church, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. The proof tongue benefits the unbeliever, 1 Corinthians 14, 22. The personal tongue requires no interpreter or interpretation to be beneficial to the individual, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. The prophetic tongue requires an interpreter to benefit the church, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. The proof tongue requires no interpreter for the interpretation to be understood by the unbeliever, that's Acts chapter 2, verse 8. The personal tongue is understood by no one but God, 1 Corinthians 14, 2. The prophetic tongue is understood by the church, 
with the aid of an interpreter, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27. The proof tongue is supernaturally understood by the unbeliever. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 8. It's very clear right there in Scripture. One gift, three expressions. Each expression serves a different purpose. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your moment of truth. This teaching was taken from my book, Praying in the Holy Spirit. If you would like to read the first chapter for free right now, all you have to do is sign up to my emailing list for free. Once you sign up, I'll send you that free chapter download, and then every single week, I will send you content that will help you to grow spiritually. Go right now to sign up. It's absolutely free. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash email. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.